what's going on y'all out here with a 4s run of my team magic 4 seth buggy so i need to make sure i clarify that they do have two oh this is going good too they do have uh two versions of these out there is the 6s seth and then there is the 4 seth now the 6s seth does not have a number in front of it and then of course the 4s seth is kind of what you see here and i'm thinking 4s is more than enough power especially going off road <laughs> I love the way this thing sounds. It's handling pretty good out here too. It's handling good and it's looking good as it's going. <laughs> the tires are hooking up well as well. I don't know about y'all, but I like it when a desert buggy like this goes into a corner and then it kicks up like some dirt and sand, like right there, the way it looks. Probably didn't get some of that. Try not to go too far. There's a big dip down there. And then there's a sewer up there. It's kind of covered up with grass, so. We're going to go down this way real slow. There we go. I know it's a sewer over there, of course. But... Next time I'll have to uh, get the ramp out. So we can see how this bad boy jumps. This has got great speed and handling for this on 4S. Um, I probably wouldn't even, I personally wouldn't even put 6S in here. This is plenty for this. I always said it before, I'll say it again. You know, you should have one fast car you can run on and off road with, of course, whether it's a truck or a buggy or something. And then you can kind of have your cars you can kind of just play around with, kind of like this one. Have fun with some realistic, somewhat scale looks to it, and just enjoy it. Because sometimes running at 6S, off-road and all that, can be too much. You know, breaking stuff all the time and all that, but... liking the way this is going y'all trying to find out where that sewer is it's buried up there <laughs> it's somewhere up there probably over that little hump up there so the link I'm putting down in the description is going to be for the uh, 6s and um, I know he had a few of them in stock and he was looking at getting some more in stock as well. And I'm talking to him about actually getting this one as well. So we'll see. Hopefully he'll get this too. And then um, I'll let you guys know and do an update or something. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, somewhat early. <laughs> so, thanks. So we got the seal of approval. <laughs> I think the world, you guys may know, still may not be introduced to actual, um, hobby grade RC cars. I think, um, they're still used to the ones at Walmart stuff, which is fine. I mean, my first car, my very first one was Nico. 
Or actually, it wasn't even Nico. It was after that. Um, I think it might have been Nico. I can't remember the name of it, but it was an arm roll car. And um, my brother got one, too, and he had um, more of a, I guess, almost a Subaru-looking car. But long story short, that's how we got it. That's how I got into RC cars. We got them. My mother got it for us, and uh, we were playing with them at her place. And she had carpet everywhere except for in the kitchen, and the kitchen wasn't that big. But he would beat me on carpet when we went to the kitchen. I knew mine was faster because of the way it ran. Um on the floor it was more of a road car than anything. So when we got back home and got in the basement, <laughs> I was getting them. And the bug just bit and we were we were getting cars ever since. <laughs> um, I had got a a doom buggy. I can't remember the names of them either. I wish I could find that again, but that was my first one, man. I love that thing. It used um, eight double A's. And I think it used the yeah, losing nine volt inside the transmitter, but man, I'm telling y'all. And of course, the better batteries you put in, are, the faster the car would run. I, for a while, I had been running the Walgreens batteries. We used to go to Walgreens like every week, about a mile and a half up the street. And uh, one day, I was like, I got some extra money. I'm gonna get some energizers, man. I put those energizers in there, woke that car up. I was like, oh my god. I drove it until the batteries died in it. I never got rechargeable batteries for it, but <laughs> my brother even came downstairs one day and was like, what is that noise? Because the tires are like squeaking and stuff on the floor. It was just a blast. It was a fun time. And then, of course, we had a couple other things, and then we started getting to the Nico, uh, Rhino, things like that. So, But all in all, um, we didn't know about Hobby Grade until uh, my friend got... Um, shoot, what did he get? Oh, I can't remember what he got. I can't remember what got me into Hobby Grade. I know my first one was a Monster Beetle. I think we actually went by a hobby shop and saw him, but from that point, it was like, yeah, we ain't messing with these no more. The Toys R Us brand. I mean, it was they were fine, but when you break them and you couldn't really replace the parts on them, even the, uh, the Rhino, which was a, a 10 scale buggy off yeah, it was 10 scale 10 scale uh two-wheel drive buggy you still couldn't find parts for it if you broke it so of course the 80s um were ruled kind of by tamaya and kyosho for a while and associated came along and other companies came along traxxas even came along in 86 with their traxxas cat that was the first company to really offer a ready-to-run kind of hobby-grade car. And from that point, Traxxas kind of exploded with other cars on the scene. Maybe I'll do a Traxxas video. Maybe I'll do a whole Traxxas line of cars video because I'm pretty familiar. And I just dumped, no! <laughs> Maybe I'll do a, um, a complete video on that, on Traxxas stuff. But I want to get this out, guys, and run it to you. I know I was talking more about other stuff, but this runs good and this looks good. So... Um, I'm gonna of course get this out and run it in different areas and stuff as well But I had to get it out and do a forest run of it So you guys always up to like subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching